Does someone's handwriting reflect their personality and how important is that in Chinese culture? In today's video, we'll learn the expression 自如其人 as well as the most renowned calligraphers in Chinese history. The expression 自如其人 means that your handwriting reflects your personality. 自 being character, Ru being like, qi ren meaning that specific person. So your handwriting reflects who you are. This is a concept that I think is very deeply set in Chinese culture. It's said that you could glean insight into great thinkers, writers, politicians, poets, and painters from their handwriting. On a more personal level, my mum used to fondly share anecdotes of receiving love letters and she would only read those that had good writing because it reflected good personality and a boy that sent her a poorly written love letter wasn't even worth considering. This idea of good handwriting showing good personality is something that Chinese parents are always trying to cultivate in their children. When it came to my turn to learn calligraphy, I always wanted to pick uh, the more slender or feminine fonts. My mum wanting to beat that out of me and for me to be a strong, firm woman always selected calligraphers for me to emulate from that had strong and firm handwriting. And it's definitely not just my mum that has that sentiment. This is an idea that has been echoed throughout history as we'll see later on. And if you ask your Chinese friends, I'm sure their parents would have commented on their handwriting before. When you go to shops or filling out government forms, everyone always will look at someone's handwriting and be like, hmm, hmm, or hmm. Now you might think it's a big leap from how you write to who you are, but it may be a self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts. When you study calligraphy, teachers often ask you, what kind of personality trait would you like to develop? Or what kind of person are you? Maybe you could learn a font style that matches or suits your personality. It might be an easier job. Now, whether or not you agree that one's handwriting reflects one's personality, it's still important to know how Chinese culture views certain font styles. And who better than to discuss these key font styles than the four great masters of Kai Shu. Remember we talked about Kai Shu in our font video? It's the Kai Mo, the best font to learn from. And even within this school or this style, there were four distinct styles. Yan Zhen Qing, Liu Gong Quan, Ouyang Xun, and Zhao Mengfu are the four masters of Kai Shu. Kai Shu Si Da Jia. Let's learn a bit more about them, and who knows, maybe you'll find your font style. So, first up, we have Yan Zhen Qing. He is the origin of Yan Ti. Yan Zhen Qing was a politician in the Tang Dynasty. He was known for his honest, straightforward, and loyal character. It is said that during the Anshu Rebellion, the Anshu Zhiluan, the emperor sent him to negotiate with the usurpers. Unfortunately, on the way to the negotiation, he was captured by the rebellion. The head of the rebellion wanted him to go back and convince the emperor to step down and realize his faults. Yan Zhenqing, being the loyal servant to the Tang Dynasty, said he would never do this. The head of the rebellion said that he would throw him in a fire if he did not go back and do as he was told. Instead of going back, he threw himself into the fire. The rebellion were so moved by his loyalty, they actually had to pull him out of the fire. So apart from being an all-round good dude and a great politician, he was also a great calligrapher. People emulated his writing Yen Ti, not just because it was he was a great artist and it was beautiful, but people wanted to be as honest, as loyal, and as straightforward as Yan Zhen Qing. And you'll see this pattern throughout the fonts. As Chinese history develops, a lot of people want to emulate these great thinkers, and one way of doing so is by learning how they write. Next, let's learn about the successor of Yan Zhen Qing, Mr. Liu Gongquan. 
Liu Gongquan's font is known for being thin but strong. So the feminine font that I was talking about is quite well represented in Liu Ti. While Liu Gongchun didn't do anything as dramatic as throwing himself in a fire, he was still a well-renowned politician in the Tang era. It's said that one of his characters was worth thousands of gold. Liu Zi, Yi Zi, Zhi Qian Jing. One day, the emperor of the Tang dynasty asked Mr. Liu Gongchun, what is the key to good calligraphy? He answered, Yong Bi Zai Xing. What this means is that if your mind is in the right place, your calligraphy will represent that calm state of mind. And this expression is something that you hear a lot of calligraphy teachers share with their students. One must be in the right frame of mind and a calm frame of mind to have good handwriting. The third calligrapher is Ouyang Xun, widely recognized as the best calligrapher of Kai Shu. It's said that Ouyang Xun was obsessed with calligraphy since a young age. It was common back in the day to have inscriptions or calligraphy carved into stone so that you could get your piece of paper, copy over and learn a great calligrapher's font. And it's said that Ouyang Xun was so obsessed with calligraphy that once he went past an inscription on his horse, came back, looked at it, left again, came back, decided to sit there to admire it a bit longer, then decided, okay, it's time to leave, then came back and sat there for three days. That's how much he loved calligraphy. He sat in front of an inscription for three days to try and understand and learn its beauty. I challenge you to sit there for three days learning Chinese characters and calligraphy. Now, while Ouyang Xun's calligraphy was known throughout the kingdoms, the best calligrapher in history, his looks weren't rated as such. It's said that when an emissary came to the Tang court, looked at his handwriting, then his persons, they said, hmm, literally, I thought he was taller and more handsome, I guess the ancient Chinese version of having a voice for radio. But it's okay, he will still go down as the best calligrapher in history. The final calligrapher is Zhao Mengfu. Unlike the previous three, which were from the Tang dynasty, Zhao Mengfu was of the Yuan dynasty, Yuan Chao. His font is called Zhao Ti. It's said to be fresh, clean, crisp, traditional, yet creative. Zhao Mengfu was actually more well known for his paintings than his writings, but nonetheless, he has gone down in history as one of the best calligraphers of all time. Why? Because he had a free spirit and yet he kept to the traditional. It's said that his font combines the best of traditional thinking, yet adding a personal flair. I guess an interesting thing of note is that whilst being such an artiste, Zhao Mengfu really believed in the importance of practice and practice through emulating or copying great writers. So work hard, work hard, work hard, practice, 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 and maybe your handwriting will be as good as the greats. So today we covered the four masters of Kai Shu, Yan Ti, Liu Ti, Ou Ti, Zhao Ti. For me, the most important thing is not necessarily that you pick a favorite calligrapher, but understand the importance of one's style of writing and how someone might perceive your character. We really do believe that and that your character reflects your personality. Now you can follow Zhao Mengfu's advice of studying and learning from the greats by using Scritter.com because we use Kai Ti for all our materials. So do go check out Scritter.com. Support this channel by signing up for a free trial. We'll see you there and at the next video. 再见!